sg jpi slash zero zero slash two twenty twenty. Mr. Otechuku Obie China Mrs. Ongobisi Obie China Mrs. Federal Special and Rogers Force You are liable to be prosecuted. I'm to be prosecuted. And if found guilty, and if found guilty, you will be seriously dealt with. I will be seriously dealt according to the law. According to the law. Oh, now, sir. I open to probation. Swear by Almighty God. Swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give, that the evidence I shall give before this tribunal, before this tribunal, will be the truth, will be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. What we can swear on God that the truth is. You are the lawyer. Yes. Is there a call? No. What your petition is about? And if you have any documents you want to present in support of your case, you will also do so. When I receive a text message from the DHL that I have a person with them, with an unknown number. So later in the day, I was in school, I'm a teacher, and my husband is a businessman. That time the day, the number called me and said, and asked me if I received the text. I said, yes, who is this? Because I'm not expecting any person from the DHL. He said, I should give him my address and ask me what I do. I told the person that I'm a teacher. He said, okay, that I should give him my school address or my home address. I said, I don't know you, but the person persisted. So later he said, okay, then he will call me back. After school that day, I went to my talk to my husband. I said, look at what happened today. So my husband now said that if the person should call me back, I should give the person my school address the next day because I wouldn't be in the house. So he took the number from me, called the number, it was switched off. He said, okay, that I should wait his coming. But I asked him, who are you then? He said that he's a DHL officer. That when he comes, he will explain himself better to me. And the person that sent the package, I said, okay. After two hours, he called again with another number. I said that they are near the school, that I should be coming out the gate. I went to my proprietress, I told her. So, she told me to go and come back quick. On getting to the school gate, I saw a jeep, black jeep, with hood men inside. And one person was on a DHL apron coming down. So he was calling me. As I was answering the call, he was down there monitoring and was giving signal to those in front. So I was like, maybe he's the one. Because I've seen the DHL apron he was wearing. 
immediately they approached me. They started beating me in front of the school. That I should enter the can follow us and go. So the woman was so afraid. She now told them to tell to tell her the people they are so that when my husband comes, or at least she will send a message to my husband. They didn't disclose themselves. They said they are police. They are sars. Your office, they do not disclose. So being that I have told my husband what was going on before they came, they now carried me. They pushed me inside the car. They left with me, not knowing where I was going to. Inside the car, the men were slapping me, beating me. And I was two months was pregnant. So along the line, I started vomiting and crying. That was when they found out I was two months pregnant. And upon that, they were threatening me. They now carried me out, took me to the field there. So that was when I was like, I will die here. Let me contact my husband. He has been calling me. If you should allow me to tell him my whereabouts, not knowing that my husband has been going from one police station to another. From Ejibote, from Esolo to all the police stations. So later, at last, he now decided to come to Ikeja to check. But we've not had any quarrels with anybody that will prompt to the arrest. So around five o'clock, when Philip Rainwa. Christian and Haruna Ido with other people with them. So my husband was raging over the phone. Where are you? I've come to the school. Your phone has been switched off. What has happened? He left his working place, his business place to the school because he has been calling. My phone has not been going. He now decided to come and check me in the school. So when he came, my Hashem told him that, look at what happened, that some policemen came and took me away. So when he now inquired from the Hashem, the Hashem told him that he doesn't know those people, but they said that they are policemen. So he now decided to be going from one police station to another. So after the call, he put it on the last speaker. I spoke with him. He was asking me, where are you? I said, I don't know where I am. I don't know where I am for now. So it was Christian that told him, gave him the direction on where to come and meet him. And we are F. Field, Ikeja. And on his coming, he went and withdrew some money so that he would be able to meet up with the transport and every other thing. On his coming, they went to meet him, to bring him there. Immediately they saw him, they started beating him also using head of gun to hit his head. They even put tire on his neck and said that they would burn him alive. I was crying. I said, the suspect you are looking for, I don't know what I, I don't know anything about him. So they started interrogation. They beat us, they brutalized us, tortured us. Even they used stone to be hitting his head where they were beating me.
when I was two months, I was urinating on my clothes. They said they would kill me. That is not even my husband that pregnanted me. That I should go and provide a person. I was crying. I said, I have not even understood what brought me here in the first place. In the evening time, around some minutes after seven, it was getting dark. The nun took us to Federal SAS Ikeja. So that was how I was arrested and my husband too joined. So later we pleaded with them that at least they should allow us to contact one person so that the person will know our whereabouts. They said no, that we are going to rot in there because we have not provided the suspect they are looking for. I pleaded with them, I said, I have a five-old child in the school. Five years old child in the school. Let me call somebody that will take him home. They said, let him die there. That he too is also a kidnapper. They were raining abuses. As they were raining the abuses, they will be beaten. So later on, the nurse said, okay. They gave my husband a phone to just, they were holding the phone, just call one person. So later, they stopped calling us for the interrogation. When they later finalized on their issues, they left us there one week, a pregnant woman, I did not eat, I did not drink. I told them I want to go because I wanted to register for Antinental. They said I should want the child to yes. And I told them that the doctor said I don't need any stress. That my kind of body is the body that needs to stay one place. They said no, let the baby die. And on the process, I lose the baby. It was later, after the detention, I came out. When I was released, I went to hospital, then I found out that the baby is gone. You have to wash it off. So along the line, on the 1st of October the same year, they came for the second arrest of my husband. Please, sir, tell me where you're taking my husband to. He said that Oga wants to see him. I said, who is the Oga? He said, Philip, that the other is from Abakiari. So he now said that she won't worry, that he's coming back that evening. They took away my husband with guns and everything. After they have beaten him inside, the guys have beaten him inside. They forcefully push him. Somebody that was preparing for church, they push him out. I was even the one that was begging them to allow him to wear clothes. Because he was in boxers, he was preparing for church when they now intruded. They took him, as I was pleading with them, they said no, that they will not leave him until they take him to the other. That day, I called his line, the line was not going. My husband's line was not going. I had to contact our lawyer. He said that she no worry, that he would do something. That day, gone, I did not see my husband. No cause, nothing. 
the next day gone, no cost, nothing. It's day three of the Lagos judicial panel set up by the Lagos state government to look into allegations of abuse by the disbanded SARS operators. Like you know, this is one of the five to five uh, demands by the NSARS protesters. Now, so far we've had three days, this is the third day, and today the panel started to sit at about 11 a.m and with four petitions on its list. One of the petitions is heard, three, the other three were not, have not been heard. Now, two were adjourned, one was stood down. Now, one of the cases that was called had a very emotional uh, testimony. Mr. and Mrs. Obechina, she said that she was picked up from her school as a school teacher. She was picked up as a result of the fact that uh, the SARS operatives had a suspect in mind and needed her to fetch that suspect. She was picked up and for 22 days she was in their custody. That same day, her husband was also arrested because he came you know, to see her and to find out where she was. He was also arrested. She was pregnant at that time, and she lost the pregnancy. Some weeks later, she was, her husband was arrested again. She was pregnant again at that time, and she lost the pregnancy again. It's been a very uh, emotional testimony from her what she says. And she said that the matter was taken to court at some point and she was awarded uh, two million naira uh, damages, which she has not received till date. Now, the other two cases that were called were adjourned and one has been stood down. The cases were adjourned because the counsel for the SARS operatives say that they need to be served properly before they can join issues. And for one of the cases, the SARS operatives say that they will be able to uh, join issues later today. Reporting live from Lagos Court of Arbitration in Victoria, Channel Television News.